Wilds into Wilds, Wilds through a goal, Slossy beyond Fodringham, and the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby, and for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, Duffy, he can hit them, and he does. Oh! Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to New York Talk, the Royal United podcast. It's another, it's another five nil defeat. Um, in what is probably a club first, I do a bit best checking I can. I can't see we've ever lost five nil back to back. Um, so you know, this team, they're a group of record breakers. You can say what you want about them; they've got their go. They clearly want the records. Um, We'll talk about that as we're closing and potentially another record with another, if, if another defeat comes next week. Um, yeah, this will be a fun hour. Mick, how are we? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not too bad, thank you. I'm not too bad, I guess. What about you? Yeah, you know, football aside, it's all gravy, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. um, we've got a lot of people. Mark Connell, Power Mad, Martin Holland, Steve Grundy, uh, the Millers. Craig's here for a Mick rant. Which I'll get on time, I think. Noel Jordan, Harvey Kelwick, Dave Lawton, Alfie, Chris Page. There's loads of you with us already. Loads of comments we're going to come through to um, and go from then. Heavy Metal says, another upbeat episode. Not today. <laughs> Not today, mate. Um, two things I want to start with. First of all, I put something out on Twitter earlier about kind of setting up a, a new show where you would send us in voice notes. So we've got, the plan would be to set up kind of a WhatsApp where you would send us a minute's voice note. We all then collect them, put them out on a special episode just to get a few more fan voices around, really, because it's it's difficult to do on a normal show like this. Uh, if anybody is interested in that, let us know. We'll, we'll set something like that up um, over the next few weeks because people have opinions at the minute, strong opinions as well, understandably. No, um, never. Yeah. Positives, Mick. Again, not football related. It doesn't have to be Rotherham United related. can be weekend related. I do have a slight Rotherham United related one, though. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, pre-game yesterday when Liam Richard came out, because Liam Richard comes out early to clap the fans. Mm. He he took the mascot to clap the Rotherham fans, and I thought that were brilliant because I bet that kid felt like a million dollars. I bet he felt absolutely amazing that kid for that minute. I mean, the Rotherham team brought him back to Earth ten minutes later, but for that minute, I thought I, that, I, I'm sure that kid would have been absolutely buzzing. And I thought it was great of Liam Richard. Just a little thing, um, I thought it was nice. That they were really really good. Um, yeah, yeah, you'll get yourself a reputation. We don't have nice guys. We don't like nice guys. We don't want nice guys. Uh, we don't want that kind of thing at our football club, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, good, nice touch. Nice touch. Pointless, as it turned out, as you said, for everybody apart from that young lad who, uh, like you said, you know, it's, uh, it's a special memory for a minute. Mm. Yes. As long as you don't remember the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, if it looked, if his mum and dad took him home. At that moment, because then his day would have finished. All right. Is there any, anything, any funny, happy, positive moment you've got? Not football related. No. Okay. I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying watching Red Bull implode in F1. I think that's um, that's a thing of absolute beauty. But um, uh, football related, no. I, I've, I've nothing. I've nothing for you at all, there, mate. I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, five nil defeat. Done a, bit, done a bit of research, which again is novel for this show. We've now conceded five or more goals four times this season. That is the most since 1957 58 when we conceded five goals, five, five or more goals, five times. We did stay up that season. Um, but anyway, that's a long time, um, since we've done such a thing. Um, you defend, you didn't defend the players, Mick, last time out. But you were yeah. kind of willing people to sort of be a bit kinder on them, maybe. Um, that was Saturday was worse, and just your general thoughts. We'll come to some specifics, obviously, later on. But it's becoming difficult, more difficult and difficult to defend these players. Well, it's impossible to defend these players. Yeah, as much as I'd like to try, um, I, 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 I just can't. I just can't. You know, um, I don't know what to say, frankly. Um, 
I mean, if we'll go, we'll go through the game in a bit, but overall, there's just nothing there, is there? Oh, there's, no, that's not true. There's very little there. There's nowhere near enough from the players that are showing some passion, and they're few and far between, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But there's not enough coming from them, um, and and they're getting no support from some of the others. It's just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Really, it, it, it's so difficult given the given the sort of positivity we had at the beginning of the season, to where we are now. It's it, it's just I, I, it's it's night and day, isn't it? You know, mm. um, so so difficult and to to watch to put up with, um, and and I think we're 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 almost if not we're at the stage where it's just it's just celebrating our embarrassing we are you know we, we we've almost gone full circle um yeah. and we don't put five past us then uh, then they must be really crap um but but yeah it's so hard and i i've got nothing i've got nothing at all unfortunately sorry mm. i can't help you <laughs> no no yeah i get it i get it I, yeah we'll come to the speaks um glenn out of sky who sky blue hub says uh from the coventry fences who impressed you more coventry or norwich it's impossible to answer that, Glenn. It is literally impossible to answer that um, because of how bad we are. I, I saw a tweet yesterday, a reply to a tweet yesterday, Mick. Um, so I, they, they kind of put that you know, if any other championship team lose back to back, that tells you there's not there's nothing wrong necessarily with the players. It's mm-hmm. my it's, it's something else. I sort of said if even a team at a lower level like a League Two team, if they played a, if they played a championship team. For a lot of times, there's a good chance they wouldn't lose consecutively five nil, even even at such a low level. So that's it, there's something wrong with this group, yeah. and it's, it, it's strange because Liam Richardson. I saw a lot of comments. I I was positive about Liam Richardson's pretty much presser. You were positive. I, he, he talked very very well for probably the first time ever. He's, he was a bit more mm. open and a bit more fighting talk really from him. Um, mm. Then it's just it was worse. Saturday were worse than Coventry game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was um, for, for long periods of the game. It was, um, and he, he's, he's he's clearly reaching the end of his tether because you know he's he's he strikes me as a manager who publicly, certainly to the, to the press, will will sort of give the usual cliched answers because um, that's how he that's how he started out uh, during his interviews, and, and that's fast becoming. Thing of the past with him, you know. He's starting to get. He's he's clearly rattled. He's clearly annoyed uh, that that what he's asking the players to do is not being done. Um, so yeah, I feel for him. I, I really do. I feel for him because he's 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 literally peeing in wind, isn't he? You know, no matter what he does, he he, he can't he can't win. Um, and and it's not him that's out on the pitch kicking the balls. You know, it's the players that that are not doing what he's asking them to do, and it's basics. It's absolute basics. Yeah. Um. Certainly, the first goal, um, or the first couple of goals. You know, it's just basic, basic defending from experienced people like Sean Morrison. Just, just not. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, I feel. I feel for him. I really do. It's not fair. It's not fair on him. But you know. We've got another 10, 10 games of this to go. Nine. Only nine. nine games. Thank God for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, uh, I don't. I can't remember what you asked me now. You know, it's it's, it's got to that stage where we, we talk about Rotherham United, and it you just drift off into a into a, a daze of disappointment and embarrassment. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's bad. It's not it's not not good at all. No, it's not no. Uh, Danny is with us. How are you doing, Danny? I'm doing all right, thank you very much. Um, just to <clears throat> bounce off what Mick just said, my mind goes into dial up modem noise whenever someone talks about Rotherham to me. It buzzes yeah. and squeaks and then just sods off somewhere else. But no, I'm doing all right. How are you two tonight? Football aside, I think we're all good. Good. Um, uh, Powermed says, Mick, tell him with a straight face that the players care about playing. I, I never said that they all do. Uh, the key word in that is all, and I never said that they all do. There's a good proportion that still do and still care and still hurt. 
and we'll be hurting after after these last two games without a doubt. Mm. But there are some that uh, that clearly don't, um, and and that's that is hugely hugely disappointing, hugely disappointing, um, yeah. and unforgivable really. Yeah, well, yeah, one we'll more come on to this. Um, Paramount Football Mad says what bugs me is the performance because it, it switched two weeks ago. Yeah. Now. Well, that's part of it. I think, um, I think we said that at the time, Matt. I think we said at the time that 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 second half performance at Ipswich was a was a was more disappointing than it mm. was positive because they showed what they're capable of doing. Um, and and yeah, that, absolutely, I agree with that. Mm. Yeah, it shows what we're capable of when we all pull the same direction. But then, Danny. Right, we'll come on to the splits in a minute. We'll talk about some terrible defending. But who was that on? Is that on the players because they're not responding? Because it, they Lee Richardson, did they implement Lee Richardson's ideas on that on that for, on that for half an hour, forty five minutes, and there was something there, or is this on Liam Richardson? Is it on the players or Liam Richardson? Um, I think it's um, not not to split hairs or anything, but I think it's a bit of both. I mean, I agree with what Mick said how. Um, I don't think all of the players have down tooled uh, down tools. I think some of them have. Um, and the Ipswich game is, like I say, the example of where we all pull in the same direction. But we're at the point now where some people on the rope aren't pulling at all, and some people having to pull twice as hard, which forces them into mistakes, which then makes everything else worse anyway. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I do think it is also partially down to Richardson where. Um, he has to find a way to get him out of that, but <clears throat> he can only really do that with five substitutes and a starting 11 on a match day. And in training, in terms of the football that gets played on the grass, that's down to the players and it's down to them to sort it out on the pitch themselves and implement what Richardson's trying to bring to the table. That's their job, mm. but it's Richardson's job to try and get them out of whatever rut that they're in. Um, and I think he is trying his absolute hardest to do that, but he's getting no response on the pitch other than them from like three players, or at least that's how it comes across mm. to the fans anyway. I can name you on one hand the players who look like they try for 90 minutes when they're on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, mate. You're right. Um, it's a great laugh in a miller, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Adrian Grease says, clearly everyone has gone mentally. But out of, out of despair comes opportunity, a chance to rebuild from the scratch next season. Clear that, clear the crocs, and those that don't care and sell uh, sell on better players. I think any player who willingly wants to play for this club next season deserves to have a lot of money thrown at them, <laughs> and who, who are willing to commit to Richardson and rebuild it. Any player who goes, yes, I want to be here next season, and isn't forced to be here by contractual agreement, should be given a lot of money for it. Yeah. Uh, Alfie says, can we be mathematically relegated on Saturday? I don't think we can. I think Huddersfield won today and Birmingham won on Tuesday. Technically, we could have done. Is We're Preston the earliest, I think? Preston would be the absolute earliest, but I think I relies on Birmingham winning on Tuesday and then almost everybody winning on Saturday. Right. I think it's more likely to be Millwall or possibly live on Sky um, against Plymouth. That'd be ah, so that's why they've selected that one. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's Nathan Crabtree says they're not doing their careers any favours playing how they are. Yeah, his it's post match interview yesterday was interesting. Mickey. He, he talked about people's agendas um, and things such as that, which is again an interesting thing to say. The mask is kind of slipping a little bit from Liam Richardson in terms of defend. He said he, he said he took the blame. He said he said he was responsible as you'd expect a manager to do, but he's clearly very very unhappy with. For I take it this is all my, my my interpretation. He's very very unhappy with some of those players. In terms of the commitment that they're giving, how that they're saying that they are committed, and mm. then they're performing like that, which is not a group of players who are committed as a group collective. I'm sure some of them are, um, but Emily Richards getting frustrated publicly, and that's that's not a good sign. No, it's not. It's not a good sign for those players. And I suspect behind the scenes, there's some uh, some proper earache being given out. Um, it would appear. Um, so yeah, I'm glad he's getting frustrated in that in in one sense, you know, mm. because he, he he's it's going to instill more passion or more desire into the players that have got some already, and the ones that aren't, 
You know, they're, 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 well, they're going to end up doing one, aren't they? He's going to get rid of them. Um, I, I, well, I say get rid of them. We're just not, not going to play them, you know. Um, so, well, it'll be interesting to see what the movements are in terms of uh, lineups for the next few games. Mm. You know, because I think you'll get an, you, we might get an indication from that of players that are not pulling the weight, not playing. Um, you know, so Jordan hugel has gone from captain to to substitute in in one game. Um, I, I I don't know whether he's one of those players or not, but um, yeah, he needs to get frustrated. He needs to get annoyed. He's right to do so, um, and we'll have to see what happens. We'll have to see what happens next time around against Huddersfield in terms of lineup. I think Shelley Richardson said, getting sorry, <clears throat> sorry Shelley to pardon off your comment. I think Richardson getting frustrated shows that he cares as well. I agree. It shows um, that he cares about where we want where we want to go, um, and that's why I, I personally want him here, and, and I'll judge him next season. But um, yeah, sorry. Anyway, Matt, read Shelley's comment out. Sorry. Yeah, Shelley says, "Matt, if he's annoyed with them, find them or drop them. He stands at stands at home games with his arm folders, scream at them to get them forward. He's chosen the style of player. Well, you can't just find somebody for playing badly in football." Sadly, you just can't um, give him a win bonus, and that's it, really. Yeah, you would all get a win bonus, you, you things like that. People have mentioned to go follow on from that that you could put kids in. Why would you want to scar those kids with this shower? Why would you want <laughs> Curtis the Rose, who's potentially got a really, really good future ahead of him, to be scarred by this absolute circus of a season? We all remember you, Jerry Yates, don't we? Yeah, you, you shouldn't be subjecting those players to that. Because if you play 11 kids on Saturday and we all boot players, those 11 kids have got that memory in their, for, their, for the rest of their careers. So he's got to play the, the players that he's got available. Um, scream at them to get them forward. He's chosen that. He's already said that this is not his style of play. He's already explained that. We can talk about how, 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 we, how, we, how we think it's right and wrong. He's saying this is not how he wants to play football, but he's playing with the cards that he's been dealt. All you can do is take him at his word with that. Um, yeah. I mean, Danny, the, the only, sorry, the only thing we can judge on is how uh, Wigan have performed on the Richardson in the past. And even though they didn't get results in the championship, they were still very progressive going forward, but we aren't. And organised. They were very, very organised. Exactly. It's the like players bought into it. Yeah, it's like Richardson's that's, trying to get to blackjack with a two and a three. That's how it feels at the minute. That's exactly the problem. That's yeah. precisely the problem. He's wanted to play a team that's organised and he's got a... a, a a certain number of players within that team that are not willing to not willing to play that way, or not. Yeah, well, it's going to be not willing because they're more than capable of doing it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, when you actually analyse it, if you if you looked at the game and 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 then just concentrated on players and where they should be and where they actually are on the pitch at, mm. at specific times, there's many many of them are just completely out of position. You know, they're not they're not then they're not they're not performing well. They're not performing right and they're not performing the way that they've been asked to perform quite clearly. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm kind of with you, Danny Judge, on next season, but you can't keep getting battered every week. We'll, we'll come... And I know <laughs> this time... Well, well, <laughs> what? My <laughs> dear. <laughs> well, what you can't do, admit, Danny, sorry, is you can't lose 5 nil every week and keep your job. It's, no. it's just... it's not. I agree. I think I think the time's ready. With, I, I, let's just get the season out of way, and then go move on next season. But you, you don't keep your job by losing back to back five nil. If you, if we get another spanking by Oldersfield, or again, are not a great team in form, if we get another spanking, you you can't just ignore the season. You've got to see something. If I'm a chairman, if I'm the owner of the football club, there's questions in my head. Of, is is he the right man going forward? Because so this goes against what I've just said, I suppose. But you can't keep getting battered like this. You just can't. No, you can't. It's the most demoralising thing ever. Like, like, ever. And it's bad enough the situation that we're in anyway. But I, I don't know, maybe Tony's shot himself in the foot a little bit by saying he's committed for Richardson with next season. Um, I, I don't know, maybe he's willing to take every hit that's, that's possible to keep it in with Richardson until next season and then going again. But we'll have to be signing about 20 players the way it's going at the minute. You know, 20 plus potentially if um, if some of the, the more more willing more willing players, shall we say, actually get sold. Um, and yeah, it, 
I think if we lose five nil again against Huddersfield, then every, every red flag is up. Just going now, nah, Richardson can't. But then, then again, you look at um, Sheffield United in the Premier League; they're getting absolute hidings every single week. Bar the um, the ball with game just got yeah, yeah, finally picked some old, didn't they? Yeah, um, but Wilder's still in the job. Yeah, you know, but maybe that's because they look at that and just go, "Well, he's the guy for next season." Maybe we're in the same situation. But I think everything that was happened this season all boils down to one thing, and that's we've gone for a college shirt again. College shirts are cursed. <laughs> they are the cursed, right? <laughs> we, we need to look at college shirts like like we look at the number thirteen shirt. It's cursed. Leave it alone. We are having, we are not having another college shirt. For as long as we're at New York Stadium, because the things are cursed. It's happened I twice it. now. Shirt. It's happened twice. The two oh, yeah. seasons, the two seasons we have been absolute doggers have been 16, 17 in this season, and they've both been collared shirts. <laughs> Mick's got I, a theory I mean, about this about um, shirts without white sleeves, haven't you, Mick? I, I did have. Then, I, then, I, then, I, then, I, then I got out of my teenage years and. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard it all now. I know you're not serious. <laughs> I know you're not serious. But, yeah, it's one yeah. of the weird coincidences in football, yeah. isn't it? It's not quite football in symmetry, but it's a coincidence. I'll give it. Yeah. Um, uh, Jag, Matt, Jag Lemans is a Wigan fan. Says little Lumbers should kept up in an admin season. Went up the following year with investment. He was effective, but the football is limited. By the way, how's Tihi doing? Same as everybody else. Mm. <laughs> I'm not having that. Tai is one of those players for me that that if he were in a if he were in a team that were in the if, if we were playing with a team of players that were in the positions they were supposed to be in, it'd be unbelievably effective. However, yeah. every time he turns around with the ball, there's nobody where they should be. Mm. We've got nobody to pass it to. Um, he's, he's been a decent player for us this season, and yeah. and, I, and I like him a lot. I do like him a lot. One. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. Go on, mate. Same question, same question I asked Danny. Bashing manager. Come on. Same, same question I asked Danny. Nine defeats in a row, two of them five nils. Um, is it just literally we could lose five nil every game between now and end of the season and Liverpool will still be in a job? Or could you see the board and Rob Scott pull it, getting a bit fed up and getting battered? <laughs> We're all fed up and getting battered, aren't we? You know, no more so than than Liam Richardson and some of the players, I'm sure. Um, yeah, we're, we're we're all fed up of it, and and I don't sacking the manager for me is not the answer. I know I'll be slated for it. Everybody wants, not everybody. So some some sections of the 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 the, the fan base want rid of him. I personally don't. Um, I I just I just don't. I think he's cap more than capable of of doing the job if he's got some players that will play for him, and not and very few of these are. So. Yeah, that, that's my view. But yeah, yeah I'm I, Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we just need to see. What is he supposed to do? You know, I agree. That's what I mean. Yeah, he, he, he does all. He, he clearly does all that he can to, to to try and get the team prepped for us for for the for a game. And then when they walk over that white line, it all just goes to wrap. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. Um, you know. It does, yeah. it, it, yeah, um, I just want to come in. Adrian Green says the collared earth mortgages shirt did for us in the mid 2000s. What I will also add in there, Danny, is that mixed theory of uh, red shirts without sleeves, without white sleeves, was also that was a double. That was yeah. a, a double whammy, that earth mortgage. Double whammy, one. that one. Um, so thank you, Adrian, for uh, we've discovered a conspiracy, lads. <laughs> we nailed it, we sorted it. If you're listening, Rob Scott, don't, don't worry about signing players, just sign whoever you want. Don't have a collar and have white sleeves, and we'll win league next year. Fine. Mm -hmm. Similar to similar to that shirt. That shirt was nice and did us wonders. Similar to that one, we'll, and we'll do fine. Yeah, I agree. Um, one word question, one word answer. Question from Chris Sander on Twitter: Will Liam Richardson be in the be in charge for the first game of next season? Um, he he, made, he goes on to say previous answers we gave were overwhelmingly yes. However, that was three more defeats, two of which were five nil batterings. He put drubbings are batterings. Um, Will he still be the manager next season on day one, Danny? Yes. Is that Mick? Yeah. I'm not convinced. Right. Well, that's two words. Three words. Then no is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if we if we get if we get a couple more battings, I think he'll be gone. 
Um, but I don't, we'll see. I don't. I, I I don't want him particularly to go, but I, I think he could. Uh, Mark Gamble's Mark Gamble's suggested we do a swearing episode. Oh, um, no. oh yes, please. <laughs> that. I've, I've got so much pent up aggression from these <laughs> from this season. People I work with watch this sometimes. I'll be sick. We just, um, have, we just have Mick just on mute for the entire episode, and just charging just around his self a bright red face. <laughs> <laughs> just with a black right. center line across his face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, Jordan and Kim say yes as well. Uh, let's talk about the, the goal, some of the goals, Mick. And you can only start with the first goal because shambles, shocking, another S word. Mm. Um, just, just a joke of a, of, a, of a defensive line. I don't know where Sean Morrison's gone. No. And then you've got to put a bit of blame on Hacks and Cam Humphries because if Sean Morris has gone walkabouts, their job is to then pick up the slack. The only person that's not at fault for this one's Victor. It's yeah. an absolute shambles. Yeah, it is. It's dreadful defending. And, and it's uh, unfortunately, it's Sean Morrison's man. Um, and he's just letting go. Um, yeah, no, it, it was it was awful. Awful defending. How how we can allow a striker that much time and space from a corner... It, 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 it would it, it, it not? No. Just across. Oh yeah, across it. Were yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I genuinely don't know what to say about that. It was just pitiful and and unacceptable and and, and any any other <laughs> similar word you can think of. And that's again straight away sets the tone, doesn't it? This is yeah. how it's going to be. Then is it? Um, yeah, not good enough. Not good enough by any stretch of anybody's imagination. Mm. It, it, for me, the mix bang on there, Danny. It, it sets the tone. As soon as that goal went in, I thought, oh, here we go. Another battering's coming. We're not winning this game. We're not getting a point out of this game. We're getting nothing out of this game. In fact, before that goal, probably. Um, these are experienced. Right, Sean Morrison's one of the most experienced defenders in the entire league. There's not many players will have more championship appearances than Sean Morrison. I know he's come back from a couple of weeks off, but I don't know what the plan was then because he, he was constantly out of position, Sean Murray. I don't, I don't know if he was trying to man-mark uh, Josh Sargent or something like that, but he was just all over the shop. And he's been solid enough this season. I don't know what the plan was for Sean Morris. It was just madness. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to echo exactly what I said on Twitter. It, it's great to see that your captain's got the fighting guile of a chair leg. <laughs> You know, because because if you watch the clip back, the cross comes in, like you say, he's out of position, and to appear like he's put some sort of effort in, he just does a little jump after the ball's gone past him and the tracker or, or whoever it was has already made contact with the ball. It's like, A, why aren't you tight to your man in that situation? And if you've been caught out, fair enough, you've been caught out, but why just put a little bit of effort in at the end when it's not going to do bugger all anyway? And, you know, I hate to call out players because, you know, it, 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 I don't want to sound like I'm gunning for him, but it feels like Sean Morrison's on the list of players who's down tools already. He would, it, but the thing is, the, the Sean Morrison thing doesn't make any sense because he were playing half injured Saturday. According yeah, to he, exactly. He came back to, to fill a space and he came back early from injury, but then put zero effort in anyway. It's mad, it's you know what I mean? Is, it, is, it, is Richardson forced him back early so he can have an extra body and told him what for and gone, no, you will play on Saturday because I have told you to. Yeah. Um, and he's just put no effort in whatsoever anyway. But it comes across that way <clears throat> because when we was playing, it was, you know, a little bit half arsed. Um, mm. he's, on, he's only on a year contract. He's away in, um, he's, a, he's out of contract in the summer anyway. So it's like, and he's probably looked at it and gone, we're going down anyway. So what? Mm. he's probably thought, oh, what's the, what's the, why? Why should I bother? But that's yeah. exactly it. You are the captain of this football club. Um, I'm going to refrain from using a certain swear word. You should give to about the state of what's happening on the pitch. And you should be the one that's trying hardest to get everybody else geared up for some sort of fight on the pitch. If not, take the armband off him. Give it someone who actually cares. Give it Victor. I want it other than Victor. Right? Yeah, give it Victor. Give it a good, give it a dolphin. Someone who actually looks like the care because it don't come across Morrison does. And I dare him to prove me wrong. On Saturday, I dare him to prove me wrong because I'm yeah, not seeing it. it. I'm really not seeing it. No, I'm, I'm not seeing it for most of them. 
Um, James Woodland says, I wonder if we get a win on Saturday, we'll get an emergency podcast. Um, Stay at the club, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get extended instant reaction. How's that for you? How's that for you? Yeah. Um, JB reckons there must have been a massive fallout between the players and the managers. Obviously, always possible. I can't remember if it's a second or third goal, Mick, but the one from the edge of the area, which is a brilliant finish. But again, there's, issue, there's issues with this one. You've got Ollie Rathbone half tackling. Like, this is a thing, this is there's other bits to it, but that's not an Ollie Rathbone thing to do. The, the way he kind of half pulled out of a tackle, mm-hmm. he didn't do that last season. He didn't do that season before. If you give away a foul there, you give away a foul there. It's it's in the middle of nowhere. You, you you're allowing him. You aren't in centre, and I can't mm. remember which other midfield it was, but it's T or Klukas. But again, they were nowhere near covering. Nobody in defence stepped out to, to put a bit of pressure on. Look, the finish is brilliant. Mm. But I reckon if I had hundred chances, I could do that with the amount of pressure that they that other other players were giving him because it yeah. was just it was just lacklustre again, mate, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We just we just let him run virtually from halfway line almost. You know, um, from centre circle and and un- virtually unchallenged, and and nobody really came to close it down. Hax tried to close it down, but he, you know, it, it, I mean, like you said, it was an absolute worldy, an absolute yeah. worldy. But no, you know, no keepers, no keeper in world stopping that. But he should never have been able to uh, been allowed to get to the position where he could get his shot off. Um, and yeah, just I. I it's just disappointing. It's so disappointing that 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 we're allowing basic stuff like that to happen. And I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I've, I've said that three or four times now, and I. But you know, I, I've tried my best all season to 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 sort of give a country point of view, not necessarily not necessarily my own point of view, but just just to try and provide a little bit of balance to to what's been said, but. Uh, it's so difficult when 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 that's happening time and time and time again. Basic stuff, basic basic stuff. Um, yeah, it, it was a great goal, a fantastic goal. Should never have been allowed to get to that position. Mm. You know, it's rule number one, isn't it? You don't let somebody travel that far with the ball to edge your box. Just don't. Even if it, even if it means giving away a foul and taking a yellow, mm. but. The only yeah. word of advice to any footballer when the charging forward like that is don't get sent off. Stop the attack, just don't get sent off. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think those signs, I think, the man who got his um, red card rescinded correctly, rescinded against Borough last week, I think that one was. Um, yeah. We missed the second one, but yeah, do not matter, does it? I, I think, uh, I think there's, there's only two goals that can be marginally excused from Norwich because two of them are absolutely world-class finishers. Well, even the fifth one, which you're going to mention as, as the worldie, that is an absolute worldie. But there's again, there's many problems with that. Exactly. Josh, it should have been dealt with a long time before he was in that position. Well, there's two things. So Josh Sargent's had a, had, a, had, a, had a shot on goal, which I think it was probably Revan should have done much better with. Victor then makes a good save, pushes it to the edge of the box, which is a brilliant push-out. Creepers don't normally push it out that far. And then their man's basically completely unmarked on the edge of the box to then nail it. it was a beautiful, stunning finish. But again, he had all the time at world. I'm, I probably wouldn't be able to do that if I gave him 100 tries. That one <laughs> might be a bit beyond me. Um, but we can talk about the mid- defence, Danny, and the defence's issue, but that's that's a midfielder's problem. Whether it's Tihi or Klukas had a stinker yesterday, um, that's that's a midfielder issue, that you're not defending your box when they're attacking. Yeah, exactly. But then it all boils down to that everything just seems so ineffective and half arsed at the minute. Um, and it, it might boil down to that. Everyone was so half arsed that they just thought, oh, we're going to concede anyway. Oh, Victor's parried it out. Oh, and they scored now. Hmm. You know, that, that feels like the mentality at the minute. Where it's like, <clears throat> even if it's, it's like, I don't mind us losing nine on the spin if we've put in effort every single time. For example, like you said, the Ipswich game was disappointing because we played really well to get it back to three all. Hmm. And that shows what we're capable of. But, but if it, if it's say a one nil and we've put a load of effort into it, it's sort of more acceptable because we've tried our hardest and still fallen short. But mm. take the Chef Wednesday one nil, we didn't even try our hardest. We never got out of we never got out of neutral. Never mind got into first gear. Yeah, and that's and it feels like we are just stuck in neutral. We're just turning out to make up the numbers for the uh, for the starting whistle to go. Mm. And 
like I say, with the midfield not on the edge of the 18 yard box, again, it's just not bothered. Yeah. You know, in, in yeah. even with um, <laughs> even with like lower level Saturday football, you get the ball out regardless of what the score is and push it out as far as you can so you can actually reset and go again. Mm. But if we're not doing the first step, how can we reset and actually be organized? But then that's the thing, we're just not organized at all. The players just don't organize themselves on a football pitch. No, they don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, people are suggesting change of formation. We could see a change of formation. I don't think it makes any difference with this play. We, I feel really bad to, sort of saying this in public, Mick, to be honest with you. Talking about the players in this sense, we try not to dig players out on this on this show. We haven't dug them out individually in the past, even this season. Um, but you, you, I can't defend. I can't defend any of them other than Victor, and again, maybe Hax and maybe Tihi. I just can't defend any of what they're doing. They're not. It, it, we were stuck. We're stuck in between two or three different. We, we're not now. We're not really, really wide. Where Kyoso and Revan are touching on, on wide and pushing forward, and we're also not compact. So what? What is the? What are we trying to do? What are the players trying to execute? You know when when we were, went down on sixteen seventies under Warney, we could see it. I can get it. I can see what they're trying to do. They weren't very good. The players they weren't good enough. And Warney was still learning. But I got it. Understood it. That's fine. I don't know what these I don't know what these players are trying to do at the minute. I don't I just don't get it. No, I don't. I don't. Whatever it is they're trying to do, they're not doing it. Um, you know, whatever it is they've been told to do, wherever it is they've been told to play, a lot of them are not doing it. You know, they're, they're constantly out of position. The midfield, which which should be which should given the given the players that we've got available to us in there should be should be a decent enough midfield. Mm. Should be solid. And it's just non-existent. Thay, he's, he's having to do virtually everything. Uh, certainly yesterday on, on on Saturday against Norwich, you know, Klukas was permanently out of position. Um, Rathbone was doing his Rathbone things, but he he, he he wasn't available. He wasn't available to receive a ball because he went out of place, out of position. You know, he's, he's tackling were at times half assed as you point as you pointed out for that uh, that second goal. Um, so. Tiny's on a hiding to nothing there because even when he does win the ball, he's got nobody to give it to. Um, defensively, well, we've talked about defensively. Kioso and Revan tried what they could, but you know the the, the issues didn't necessarily come from, from from down down the sides, down the wings, apart from that first goal. Um, and and yeah. I have no issue with that cross being put into the box for their first goal. You know, that's that crosses get put into the box, but how it were dealt with. So yeah, I don't know. I do, it's just it's just a mess. It's just a shambles. It really is, um, and it, and it is unforgivable. And it's unforgivable for the for me because I've said it and I've been called out. Mike Mike's already called me out in the comments about these players are good enough to do it. They have the ability. They have the ability, and and I'm not basing that on what they've done for us. I'm basing that on their experience in this division. They've done it before. The evidence is there. You know, we don't. I don't have to. It's not an opinion. It's there. They've done it, and yet here we are. They're performing like a like an under fourteen side at the bottom of the league. I don't. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's just well, you do understand it. Well, sadly, yeah. sadly. Yeah, um, Rebecca says, "Why do we keep? Why keep five at the back? It's awful because we can't get out. We needed, we needed a winger from day dot. Never got them. You've an answered the your own question there, Rebecca. Um, you look yeah, at the, again, if, if we we don't have the out, we don't have the outlet to go wide because we don't have out and out wingers. Yeah. And Richardson's trying we do to. Though. We do, do we? Do we? Yeah, we've got a player. Play him as a winger, not as a wing back." Mm. Because he's no, he's no use as a wing back. He's not a wing well, back. Well, then you got one. The wing back. Yeah, so it would, it would be on the right hand side if we were to play out one winger. Well, the imbalance is there. This is the problem. The imbalance. So you can't play with one winger. So the imbalance is there. That's the problem. You can't. So I, you look I at the Richardson that. Wigan team. You can say what you want about James McLean, but James McLean would essentially play for them as left wing back. Mm. He was decent at getting forward in League One. He was, he was a good enough defender, and he could put a ball in the box. That's clearly the type of player that Liam Richardson likes in those positions. Now we haven't got that guy, and I would have guessed I would have put all the money I've got that he tried to get a guy of that type in in January. 
but nobody would want to come to this club. So what's he meant to do with the players? Mick's right. I think you're right about uh, up here, but he can't do it on his own. No. And that's, that's where really Richardson sort of stuck. He's, he can only play the players that he's got. Uh, but look. And, and that's why he's not implementing his system properly because he physically can't. Yeah. But, but I, I will say this. I agree completely what you say, Mick. These players are more, on paper, are more than capable of doing the job in this division. And I'm going to paraphrase the Brian Clough quote with this, but unfortunately, football's played on grass. Mm. On paper, they're yeah. capable, but we play it on grass. I mean, they proved it on grass previously, and that's what yeah. I'm saying. You know, mm. and it's and, and and that's that what that's what makes it all the more frustrating that, that yeah. we're in this position. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, JB says Appy should be work working up and down the flanks in home base. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, agree with that. I mean, the, the reason, I'm, yeah, that's harsh. I well, he's right. I'm, uh, so I, t- I said this to Mick yesterday. I think we found the player who's having the worst season ever is at Apaya. Not necessarily for us. Yeah. Um, obviously, he's on loan at Rotherham United. We've won three games out of 37. Uh, he's barely played any of the minutes. But his parent club have yet to win a game this season. Really? Um, yeah, the 30 games in. Jesus Christ. Before this weekend, there were 30 games in and they were beaten. So his two clubs out of 67 games this season have won three. Um, so just, poor lad. Um, yeah, there we go. That's all I've got. That's all I've got. Um, <laughs> only, yeah, I don't know what to say anymore. Um, where do we go from here, Danny? 5 0 back to back defeats. Liam Rich is a bit spiky in his post match. Uh, we can't get relegated this week, we can get relegated against Preston at the very, very earliest. Where do we go from here as, as fans as well? Because I've seen some fans suggesting we, they're not, not, not going to go, which is which is fine and fair enough. There's their own money. People are entitled to do what they want. Um, but what do you do as fans? You go and sing your art like you meant, to, like you meant to, like you should be doing. But why? Because you're shouting for these these guys that are giving nothing back. Um, I think as fans, you've got two options really. You either go to the pub um, and don't bother going to the football, um, or you go and pray for something to change you know call it blind loyalty or whatever but um i think well look at it this way everyone's like their final payment on the season tickets they've already gone out um big summit to do on a saturday and for better or worse we all support this football club and you know opinions may differ wildly on certain things but the one thing that does united is rob from united all right, fair enough, the squad isn't united at the minute, but I think the fan base will always be united behind the team and will still turn up for it. Unless there's some abhorrent money laundering scheme from Tony Stewart when we all go on a mass protest and don't turn up, we'll all still be there, won't we? Mm. And, 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 and we'll support in, in some way or another, whether it's berating the players for being shocking again or praying for something to change. Speaking of money laundering, Watford have sat the manager again today, haven't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> did, did, anyone, did, did anyone see that madness of a stat on Twitter that says that Watford have had more managers since 2019 than Dalai Lama since 1589? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right. that, that made my day, that. It's like, surely not. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember who tweeted it out, but on the off chance you are watching, brilliant tweet. I loved it. Noel Jordan says he'll have a rant before the game and after, probably no. Um, but as soon as the start, still cheer as normal. Um, yeah. Football mad as the old, or, or it's like different. He's booing from everybody. Most won't agree. Uh, if you want to boo, if you want to boo, boo. Uh, there's a season to do it. Um, Kelly Forbes has mentioned if you want to get some football, get onto Parkgate. Um, they're they're out there after after promotion, aren't they? Parkgate, to be fair to them. Mm. Mm. Really, really good. Their running's nuts until end of season, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Mike Carmel says, "That is your curse, Dan. We found the curse. Having happy as the curse. No, happy is happy, no, happy as the scapegoat. We need at least one okay. scapegoat every season. Like the, fir- the first one was Zach Viner, right? and he's still a meme at this football club. Um, then who was after that? Um, uh, Barlas were for briefly, to be fair. Yeah, before, it was, was wasn't it? Were, yeah, yeah. Wales as well. Um, yeah, who else?" I can't remember one for who were it for last season. They were a scapegoat for last season. Who were it? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, any, anyway, but 
but Don't anyway, the, yeah, exactly. Uh, black stock, but that was but that was rightly so. Um, <laughs> and and then now he's happier, and then jury's out whether that's rightly so as well. Where's of course it were where's yes, that was it. How the hell do we have Harding as a scapegoat for a B or a quality right? He I don't think he's doing very well for Millwall. Mm. But anyway, unless his fault for moving, I suppose. Race Medley says the players are playing as individuals, not as a team, like after the World Cup under Matt Taylor. This is to mm. an even worse extent than that. And that was that was a pretty bad extent. Um uh, I had a little comment I was gonna do on here. Lost it though. Uh <laughs> Danny, let's talk about the rumours that are going around with Victor. Because we've got, we'll just, the rumours are going around, so we may as well tick it off. Harry mm. says, rumours I know, and Mick will get annoyed. Yes, he will. However, a few circle that Victor has a three quarters million relegation clause, which would be shocking if true. That's the rumour, Danny. We were not aware, but we, it kind of, we, there was a rumour going around when he signed the contract that was a release clause. If it had been gone down last season, that there may be a, he may be able to go for not much money. Um, so this, for me, doesn't come as much surprise. It was the cost of trying to get him to re-sign when we did. Mm. Yeah, but it'd be interesting to see where you know the rumour has its roots from. Has it just appeared on social media yeah. or has someone official said something they shouldn't have? Um, I mean, if it is true, it'd be a crying shame for Victor to go for under a million. Um, but if it's got no proper substance to it, I'd just leave it be and see what happens. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't surprise me. Uh, some of you've got nothing to add on that, Mick. No, it won't surprise me either. But you know, we're going to sign mm. as it turned out. It, it, we'd have probably been better. Well, we wouldn't have been better letting him go, obviously, because we wouldn't have got no for him. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. The thing is, he might have a he might have a release clause of he could have a release clause of 50p, but you know, if you've got more than one club after him. Then that's that's irrelevant. Uh, uh, no, because they can all just pay, and then he chooses club. Well, we'll see, we'll see. So yeah, let's see how it pans out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, go, 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 to get some angry. You no, know, when football season's finished, people mm. will still be able to get angry about something. Um, it's Euros this, this summer. We can get angry about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just get angry about England. Oh, that that'll be nice, won't it? If we get all about Rotherham for the summer, and be angry at England being poor yeah, again. We're heartbroken by somebody else. Yeah. Um, just on the Victor rumor, the only the, the, I, I don't criticize the club. The club I've put there, I don't criticize the club because you've got him to sign. The only criticism then would come is that you haven't tried to sell him in January when we, when we were already relegated, and you didn't try to get a bit more money. That's the only way that there could be a criticism for me. Um, but anyway, uh, Martin, the last question earlier, Mick, if uh, if Woody was here, we're playing last two games, would we have conceded ten goals? Oh. And I would say not just Woody, a Woody type leader on the pitch. We've got somebody mentioned Guy Branston, Chris Wales, mm. just somebody who leads the team. That that's the reason, one of the reasons why we are where we are, because there is nobody that sort of leads this, or just gets the gets us, gets the club. This is the thing, isn't it? And this is exactly the thing. Because Sean Morrison is that type of player. Yeah. You know, you would have put before 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 he started playing for us, and, and you look at his career and the teams that he's played for. Exactly the sort of player that Sean Morrison is. When he first signed, we said he, he was just an improved Woody, like as yeah, a footballer. So, so, so what's gone wrong? You know, yeah. whether it's injuries or what, I don't know. I don't know. Um, for me, I said it. I said it after the Watford game, after he got substituted, mm. that it just it felt wrong. It didn't feel right. The set, his reaction and and as he as he wandered off down the tunnel rather than going to bench and everything else, it just it didn't seem right. That was obviously under Matt Taylor. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I agree. It wouldn't have happened. No, it, it, it absolutely wouldn't. But we wouldn't be in that. I don't think we'd be in this position anyway if you got that type of player within the squad because Woody would not put up with this sort of performance, this sort of attitude. You know, it, 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 Woody would be and always was 100% behind the manager, whoever the manager was. Um, and and ensured that the players did what they were supposed to do. Um, unfortunately, Sean Morris has not been able to do that for whatever the reason is. Mm. Um, whether it's just whether he, whether he, he don't want to, or whether it's because he's just not been present for the whole for the whole time due to injury or whatever. Mm. Um, but yeah, we all I think we all felt that he would he was a kind of a 
an upgrade in terms of experience at this level and age. Yeah. Um, mm. Prove not to be the case. No, Shirley says someone like Woody is missing a bit of heart, a bit of desire, fight for the club and badge. Someone who, someone to get at them and shout. He did it yeah. on and off the pitch. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, right. Woody will never be replaced, but no. you need those leaders uh, on the pitch. Um, you do, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, someone else we're desperate to see, Danny, is we need a Kim Adolphin in that midfield. And I'm not saying we're going to start winning games. I'm not saying we're going to, you know, everything's going to be sunshine and roses. But he's now got the players to do it. You can put Revan in there with Cam Humphries and Sean Morrison, and you put Hacks back in that midfield. We need that presence in that in the middle. We're desperate for that. Norwich had nothing to think about from an attacking sense of view because we, Eves and White, what were they meant to do with the service they had? I know they didn't have very good games, but what they were meant to do with the service that they've got? Hacks give you that presence and that something else that they've got to think about. And that's... If you're going to criticise Liam Richardson, that's one thing to criticise him. It's time. Get him in midfield. Do what you've got to do with defence. Sod it. Get a, forget about it. Get Aki Madoffin back in that central midfield role. It, if it meant getting Hacks back in midfield, I'd quite happily like to see Tom Eves as centre-back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I agree. Adolphin's natural place. I mean, I know we signed him uh, from Scotland as a centre-back and he slowly progressed further forward. Um, but he sort of... Uh, Turned into the second coming of a Jay because he was the exact same, and then it, and then we found out he was better deployed in midfield, um, and yeah, but again, it, it's Richardson trying to um, put corks in holes, and a doffing does a job as centre back, so he's gone right cent centre back to help us out. Hmm. Um, but no, I, I agree, and if by some miracle we keep Hacks for next season, um, I think he will play further forwards. In League One, yeah. when we actually have a defensive line up where we've got all uh, all hands at the pump, because you know what's happened to Tyler Black here anyway? When's he due back? We could do with him back, and then we can play it off in further forward. Yeah, 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 I agree. Or pelts, or pelts, pelts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the the centre back options we've got at the minute is Humphrey, Morrison, and Pelts. Yeah. So we and. Mm, no, nah. I'd say I'd say Revan's more wider than a proper. Center. He did a job. He did a job competently in January when we weren't getting battered every week. Yeah, yeah, true. But at this point, I'd prefer the players who know the position more naturally. Mm. Um, so if if we somehow get Blackett back soon, then I'd push it off in further forward in a heartbeat. Mm. Yeah, desperate. For it. Somebody mentioned here about Hacks. Phil says Hacks is better than half. I, I think he's brilliant at both. I just think we're missing that kind of player in the midfield. And he's a dynamic player. midfielder, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, Teller says the end of season dinner will be interesting. I would be amazed, and I might be wrong, I'd be amazed if they do an end of season awards dinner this year. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> It'll just be wooden spoons on stands, that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, all, I'm, although having said that, you, we should be celebrating Victor, shouldn't we, end of season? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But that's the it, only it, thing that, it, that you would miss out on. This is what we need to do for the end of season. Didn't we need to have wooden, like wooden spoons, spray paint of gold on little plastic stands for everybody else, and Victor gets this trophy that's like the start, the size of the Stanley Cup or something like that. Well, there you go, Victor. That's our parting <laughs> gift, and it's bigger than him. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got to try and get back to that back to Sweden, mate. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> just has the plane to himself just for the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Paul says, "Has there, has there ever been a document? Have there been document a full squad suffering from <laughs> PTSD? Probably not. No, no, probably uh, not. That's how it feels. It is how it feels. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they mentioned I've lost the comment about getting Woody. Uh, Scott Kent says, get Ronnie in. He was absolutely was fuming. Um, he called the recruitment shocking. Uh, put Scott has back as head of recruitment only. Mick the King, director of football." I'm not a fan of that, Mick. I'm not a fan of it necessarily. But at the same time, getting somebody who knows the club, this is what we're asking for. But but then at the same time, have we asked, have we got what we asked for? Rob Scott could be the director of football. He's, he's stepped up. We can question the recruitment, but a lot of that maybe falls on Matt Taylor. Mm -hmm. for, okay, you know, all Rob Scott does is give him options. Do you want to sign these players? And Matt Taylor says yes, no, or, or maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we need to wait for the answers to come through next season from Rob Scott? Or yeah. have you, is, is this now a damning indictment of what of the work he's done? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Um, because 
and, and then I go back again. He's brought some players with championship championship experience who've proven that they can do it at championship level. Unfortunately, they've not played as a team. They've played as a group of individuals with championship experience. Um, and they're now not doing what they're told to do. Mm. But they brought them in on short-term contracts as well. Um, at the beginning of this season, Tony Stewart had an eye on the finance, the, the financial benefits of remaining in the championship for another season because of the television deal. At which point, it could be argued that he was looking to then properly invest in the squad. Unfortunately, everybody else will probably invest in their squads given the television deals. Well, most will. Some will obviously take the money and run, uh, some of these owners, uh, because they're owed so much money by the clubs. But maybe that was his his, his thinking. So we'll get some players in. We've got the experience who, who can do it at this level on short-term contracts, keep us in the division, and then we'll go from there. You know, that, that's failed miserably. It's failed absolutely miserably. Um, and we can go on all night talking about why that is, but I mean, we've already gone on for an hour nearly talking about why that is. We'll do it um, again next Sunday, no? And I'm sure we'll do it again on Sunday, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> what, what did you ask me? <laughs> uh, Here is that, as far as Rob Scott, as director of football, is concerned. Um, as far as Ronnie's concerned, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in never going back. Ronnie holds. Uh, holds legendary status at this club i would hate i would hate for him to come in and and fail for whatever reason and tarnish the reputation he's got and, and, and that would be very difficult for that to happen oh God, yeah <laughs> um, but you know there are not many not many people who've been at this football club over the years that are held in as high a regard as ronnie moore is you know that you can count them on Probably on two hands over the over the history of the club, um, and but Ronnie's right up there. I, I think it would be unfair, personally, to, uh, to to drag him back into this, particularly in the situation we're in at the moment. Mm. Yeah. I'm no, not I'm saying you send him down to the dressing room and kick seven bells out of a few of them at <laughs> half time. <laughs> not what I'm saying. Well, this all. wouldn't have fl flown under Ronnie Moore, would it? These kind of no, it wouldn't. Not Absolutely, it wouldn't. But but what? then you look at the players that Ronnie had. You know, yeah, your, your Chris Wales, your Guy Branstons, those sorts of people, they wouldn't have allowed that to happen. And unfortunately, the players that we've got, there is nobody, or well, very few, that are, that are of that of that that ilk. So, yeah. Just Don't just know. bouncing off um, Guy Branston, anyone see um, JB's comment about Branston in the dressing room? Early on in the show, it was about 10 minutes or so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would actually pay to watch <laughs> Guy Bradston go into that dressing room like the Tasmanian devil and tear everything up. It would be hilarious and it would scare the life out of every single one of them. And then we'd win 1-0 next game, guarantee it. So, Guy, if you're not doing anything on Saturday, um, <laughs> just go down in the dressing room um, and just give him what for. Except Victor, Victor can step outside for the time being. Rest of them come back out bandaged up before the first half. Yeah. Um, somebody said on here, uh, Neil Jones says, can we get Rob Scott on the podcast at least to explain the season? We would love to have Rob Scott on. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, that, we wouldn't do it live, probably. <laughs> no. Rob um, Scott tells all what the hell happened. But yeah, we'd love to have Rob Scott on. Um, but uh, yeah, but then I'm sure a lot of people would prefer to have a fan, other than the happy clappers asking questions, I'm sure they'd prefer to have a fan with fans for and where we can get stupid, you know what I mean? So, look, as always with the club, if anybody says if they want to send something like that on, we will happily ask the questions. What I think are the fan questions, and I think we aren't happy clappers this season. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not. I'm feeling, no. <laughs> uh, but that might be the reason why I won't come on <laughs> because we're, we'd ask the uh, harder questions. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, pick, we'll pitch the question to the club, and they'll reply saying, "As long as you keep a muzzle on Danny and Mitt, you can have Rob Scott on." <laughs> I think. I think the, the club at the moment. Are quite rightly looking to batten down the hatches. Yeah. As far as as far as um, that kind of thing is concerned, they don't need the abuse that that, that they would get. Yes, they should be asked the questions. Uh, yes, they should be answering the questions. Maybe they will when it's all 
when the dust was all settled uh, and maybe we might find out a little bit more I don't know we'll have to wait and see but um, yeah I, I, I can't see that happening at the moment no I can't either no I can't um, uh, somebody said about getting Ronnie a statue outside yeah that's 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 possibly not possible you know what, you know what sure. I, Sheffield anyway. United have got um, a stand name after Tony Curry can we have one for uh, for Ronnie Moore and John Breckin yeah <laughs> should yeah I'd love that I love a Ronnie and Breck statue mm. um Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> right. He says harsh. This get Liam on. Imagine you'd make your money from YouTube revenue on the back of all the viewers it would get from the insomnia sufferers. <laughs> harsh, right? Very harsh. Um, there we go. I oh, well, if, yeah. I suspect if this continues and uh, that those will be the last people who'll be uh, <laughs> who'll be benefiting from the from Liam Richardson's. Uh, chats because at the moment as we pointed out right at the beginning of, of, of the podcast he's um he's getting more and more and more mm. frustrated and angry yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's coming out in public which is which is unusual i think i suspect mm. um so we'll have to wait and see watch this space i think because if we lose again on saturday five no i think he's going to be uh he's going to explode isn't he? Wait for him to do his interview yeah, think about in ground and wait and watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else, lads? I'd um, I'd love to bring back. Um, you know, when the, when the BBC did the podcast. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, and you heard Warney and um, Rich absolutely tearing into the players after the Portsmouth game. I think it was. Can we please have something similar just for the last nine games of the season, just for the laugh, where there's just a microphone outside at dressing room door just to hear what's going on? Because on that podcast, it felt like I was getting a dressing down and I was just listening to it cutting some grass. It would be hilarious, I yeah. think, and some brilliant content to put that out. So, sorry if you're watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> By the way, I know people do these poor worn videos, or not, not even poor worn videos. These videos of when the team used to be good, these are absolutely <laughs> killing me. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching there and just think, oh, went life good, wasn't it great? Yeah. And, and the, it one, and the again, one team that was better than us that season was Liam Richardson's Wigan, and we're going to have that next <laughs> oh, the season. Irony, Danny. The I irony. Know. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, you make it right. They will be good again. Um, this just feels tough. This this feels really, really tough to take. Talk back to the Paul one, that 16, 17, it was a dreadful season. But we all had something to hang his hats on, didn't we? Because it was Paul Warren that was it. Paul Warren was in charge of this team. This this guy was a legend of the club that was this time. We, we had that to kind of hang on to a little bit. Uh, did we? Or, or do you want to look back and say that all the same things were being said on social media about him not being capable of doing the job, etc. 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 We et weren't getting battered though. Well, we might not have been getting battered, but we were in the same. The the the, the, the situation was exactly the same. So, points wise, yeah. it was yeah, but performances weren't. Well, uh, listen, listen. We've been through bad times before. We'll go through yeah. bad times again, but we'll have some good times as well. It's all about that's what being a football supporter is all about. A real football supporter, not one who supports Liverpool or whatever. You know, yeah. it's what it's what happens. Um, and we've, 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 we've got to suck it up as supporters. We've got zero choice. We can moan about it like we've done for the last hour or so. Uh, but ultimately, we've got to suck it up. And We'll still be back here next season, won't we? We'll still be here on 10th of August or whenever the season starts. Of course we will, yeah. And, and I've learned my lesson from this season. My, my pre-season predictions are going to be relegation, Hurricane. zero goals scored, <clears throat> zero points scored. That's where my predictions are going to start at that level, and I, that, I'm going to set the bar low. I, I, I've spent my life setting the bar low <laughs> for the vast majority of it, and re rarely been disappointed. And then I am beginning of this season. I set it high, and look what happens. That's me done. I know Simon's not in the comments, but he predicted playoffs for us, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, God, Simon so. Um, <laughs> Chris Taylor, I just want to get this out and not get this way, but mention it. He said he asked, Do we regret swapping Kelly for Wyke? Kelly hasn't played yet. Kelly's been injured for Carlisle. So, yes and no. We all love Georgia Kelly, and I think Wyke's not maybe been the player we hoped he was, but at least he's been available. 
Uh, yeah. JJ is still injured. JJ is still not playing for Carlisle either. So he, again, he's injured. So it, it makes you wonder though why you have we signed Wyke. I wonder if it's um, to bring in a striker, and, it, and it's a player who has the utmost respect for Richardson. So he might be one of the few that actually tries to listen. Um, so I wonder what will happen next season with that because I I think if we if we do sign Wyke, I can see you typing in the comments already. Stop it! <laughs> if we do sign Wyke, I reckon he'd do a job for his next season under Richardson it because, it, because he'll understand what he's on about. The, the, the problem is these players are, are, are scarred. You don't, and this is this is odd and stupid to say. But I, I'd be looking to get rid of basically all the squad because we don't mm. need this baggage. We we just don't need it's not not and it's not necessarily getting battered every week. It's the crap that they're rightly getting off the fans as well. They don't need that baggage next season. I would genuinely keep about four of those players, and and not because they're bad players. Kluke is brilliant in League One, wouldn't he? Klukas mm. would be absolutely brilliant in League One, but I wouldn't necessarily keep him because we don't need that the, the, the sort of hangover from this from this league. Just start afresh. It depends on how willing they are to turn it round, in my opinion. Like Klukas has sort of said he wants to stay without outrightly saying it. Um yes. and if he's willing to stay through this absolute shower and go again next season, then he might have more fight than Guy than he's showing at the minute. Mm. And like you say, he'd be brilliant in League One. Mm. Uh, but I agree. Great. But, but then when going gets tough, and fans get on back a little bit because things are getting tough in League One, do they go back into their shell where they've been in this season because they're scarred from it? And that's sort of where I'm maybe coming mm. from. They they win four 0 against bottom of the league easily probably, but then when the going gets tough, then what happens? Because it's tough at the minute and they're not standing up. If that kind of makes sense, it's more yeah. than tough at the minute. It's more than tough. It's, it's beyond tough. Yeah, but you, if you're scarred, I mean, somebody jokingly mentioned PTSD, but if you, if you get a little bit of bad times and you've been in this bad time, your mind will go back to that type of that time. That Although you could also argue that you could look at this time and go, well, we've made it through far worse. Yeah, absolutely. If Liam, if Liam Richard can convince him to do it, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I get what you're all saying, but we'll see. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't make anything else. Oh, I've had enough. <laughs> Good. The Swedish um, season starts on the 31st of March. What does? Swedish season. We'll be there. Hammerby. Well, I mean, I won't you be tell there. nobody can watch it in England because it's not. It's no, not I know. But, England, but, I know, but I, uh, I suspect I suspect it might be a similar season actually. So I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> given pre-season, I'm not. I'm not holding. I'm not holding massive hopes. I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, on post-season shenanigans from us, the plan is for us to do a Euros show. Maybe, maybe it might not be twice a week, but we'll certainly do an England have, Euros have show. Have we suffered enough? No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know I'm what kidding. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah true, um, true. Um, So, yeah, we'll do that in the summer. We'll we'll, we'll do talks on an awards show. We might do a, a watered-down awards show at the end of the season. Um, because, because, you know what I mean? Um and then we'll do. We will go through the preseason predictions at the end of the season because they are they are horrific from everybody. I read them out to my wife earlier, and she just laughed at every single one of them. Um, <laughs> oh, so we'll go through. That'll cheer everybody up at the end of the season, won't it? That'll be the drinking um, episode, then, lads. Yes, you know, <laughs> we can get through it. Um, please make sure you subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you've subscribed. If you're watching on Twitter, I know there's lots of people watching on Twitter on X today as well. Do follow us on X. And if you're not already subscribed, go to YouTube and subscribe on YouTube as well. If you are on an audio listener, please make sure you have subscribed on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're getting your podcasts, and give us a five-star rating wherever it goes. If you do want us to sort of do the, the fan, um, I have to think of a clever name for it, but where you send us in your your kind of views after a game and we put them together as a short podcast, let us know. We'll, we'll do that. Um, and then we can get more fan voices involved. Because it's, it's difficult to organise shows and things such as that. Um, Shelley says, what about a live podcast where followers can join in a live Q&A, maybe? That's a good idea, Shelley. We'll look at the mm. this, this software we use is a very good software for what we do, but it's, it's not great for sort of calling in, if that kind of makes sense. Um, but I, I do like do really, really like that idea, Shelley. So we'll let us have a look at see what we can work out with that and sound issues and all and that. And if anyway would like to host that for us as well, reach out and we'll see what we can sort out. Yeah, we will. Um 
just just in the comments, uh, is anybody if, if there's anybody knocking about around Scarborough, if if anybody wants to call in and see Mike, uh, <laughs> make sure he's all right. Uh, he said perhaps we should all support somebody else, piggies perhaps. Um, I, Mike, I hope you're all right. <laughs> if, you, if you want to message us on Twitter or or somewhere, we can have a chat. It's not a problem, honestly. Just you'll be fine. Just keep breathing, and we'll get somebody with you. Um, Shell Stone says we need an award for any supporter who's been to every home and away game. If you've been to every home and away game this season, and you do go to every home and away game this season, let us know. Get in touch. I don't know what we'll do, but get in touch because you deserve. All we'll get a doctor's great. appointment for you. Yeah, we'll get a doctor's appointment. Obviously, we'll get. We'll get a... <laughs> I think um, one person who's very close to it, and may maybe he's only missed one or two. I'm not sure, but it's um, Connor Tiny. I think he's mm. get, he, he's been to nearly every game this season. Um, in the age that he is, yeah. I, dread, <laughs> I dread to think what's that what that's going to do to his football mind. Good grief! But fair play <laughs> to him anyway. Yeah. Um, as always, we've gone long. Um, we go longer when we rubbish than when we're good. Um, but there we go. Because <laughs> we get it all out of our system and we can just sit and chill for a minute. <laughs> that's what it is. We play again. Yeah, until we play again, and then we'll be on for three hours. Uh, mailbag is reopened. We're doing, in the international break. We're going to do a mailbag episode. So the Sunday of the international break. So send across your uh, questions. We've got some already in the Discord group. If you want to email them, rufcpod at gmail.com. So our our um, DMs are always open on Twitter and on X as well. So just send us the questions in. Let's we'll do some serious ones. You know who you're keeping in the summer. We'll do some serious questions. But if you've got any daft ones to break it up, uh, let us know because we need that. Um, last call. Anything else? No. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody, who's been with us. There's loads of people. Like, the numbers of the last few weeks have been record numbers for us. So thank you, everybody, who has been involved. Follow us, subscribe, like the videos, all that kind of stuff. We will be back on Thursday. Yay! <laughs> um, we will we'll preview a Yorkshire derby. Yorkshire derby, everybody. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it's not exciting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Just thank you. <laughs> habit. It was a habit. Um, <laughs> Mick and Danny, thank you very much. Pleasure as always, boys. And we'll see you all next time. And as always, up the millers. Up the millers. Up the millers. Slides into Wales. Wales through a goal. Slots it beyond Fodringham. And the millers are in front in the South Yorkshire derby. Oh. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Fodringham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box for Duffy. He can hit them. And he does. Oh. No! Secured their championship status for next season.